Now, big things are gone. Now, take a look squad. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? Was poppin', was poppin', was hey hey, was poppin', was poppin', was she cute? Was poppin', was poppin', was poppin', was Tiger Lily Squad, gang, gang. Are uh, you living? How you breathe? How you feeling? It's your girl, Essence of Shay. What's up? What's good, yo? I'm in a good mood, y'all. I woke up. Ooh, I got a wedgie a lot. Hold on now. That's better. White well, you didn't tell me my shirt was backwards. Huh? Lad. It'd be your own people. But anyways, um, I woke up at five o'clock this morning. It's February 1st when I'm recording this. I do not know when this is going out. It was supposed to go out for Sundays. Matt, hold on. Here on the channel, I want Sundays to be reflection days, story times, just deep talks. So that being said, get us in the right frame of mind, sis. Come on. Yes. So um, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about childhood trauma. So what is the definition of childhood trauma? This is just my toner. It's on my store. You should have been copped it. Hello! <laughs> my definition of childhood trauma is just basically what you go through that is like a dramatic experience while you are a child. Um, and a lot of times we go through it and we don't even know that we went through it until we become an adult. And certain things like how we treat people who we let in and all that stuff um had contributes to a lot of the reasons why we act the way that we act right so for me let's let's talk about me for a second shall we so for me um i was born into a two-parent home right My parents were married. They lived in Brooklyn, both from the Caribbean, right? At the time, my mom was going to nursing school. And I don't really know much about my, my dad, but I do know they were in a full, like a full on relationship, eh? Something happened where, um, Something happened where my dad's childhood or high school girlfriend came back into the picture. And um, <laughs> my grandmother likes to say that um, my grandmother. Now it's going to be a whole stain on my shirt. Blood. Oh, God. I can't be clumsy all my life, man. Anyways. Um, my grandmother, my, um, my grandmother likes to say, I think my mom too, but I know for sure my grandmother likes to say that the lady put some kind of um, voodoo curse on my dad, my father, um, because I think I was like around two years old. I could probably be getting the story wrong, um, but probably around two years old, he upped and left like he left his family um to go with to go be with this woman and then in turn abandon his for me i would lie here and say that yo that never affected me in any way because well of course it affected me when i was older which i'm not talking about i'm talking about as a child i acted as though it didn't affect me because my mom was like my mom and my dad and she did everything for me but i didn't realize like seeing some kids 
and seeing the relationships that they had with their dad um, bothered me and hence started me like pretending because people were asking about my dad so let me tell you how deep it was so when I became like 13 people started asking about my dad like why my dad's not around and at this time my mom was remarried and she had two more kids turn town who are after me and they would ask if their dad was my dad and I would be like uh yeah but not really um so they would ask me where my dad was and I would start making up these stories like oh he's a musician he travels a lot child I don't even know where I got any of this stuff from girl but like that used to be my story I don't even think my mom knows about this but like I used to say he's a musician he's traveling a lot um so I only get to see him during the summertime which people will believe because majority of the time every summer I will go back to New York once we move once we move from New York I will go back to New York to go visit my grams right so people will believe me like well she always be going summertime so she got to be telling the truth and um so that that kind of started the the train of like bad decisions as far as men go so then my first stepfather um apparently he was in love with me like not in a molesting way but like um he loved his daughter like that's what he called me he would like he was like obsessed like he would get me anything i want and all kind of stuff like usually how dads are with their daughters so when we moved um to st croix i was like seven eight years old my mom was pregnant with tyrone and um she didn't really know the hospitals in st croix so she wanted to stay in new york at the time because she didn't we just we didn't know this place right so um she wanted to have the have the kid in um in new york right because that's what she knew she knew her doctor she already had two of her kids there um yeah nobody could fault her for that i mean so she we moved to st croix but she left me and terrell who is right after me she left us in st croix with my new stepdad uh, well he's not he wasn't new at the time because he's been around for like years now um so she felt comfortable with this because like like the per perception was is that he was in love with his kids he had his son and his daughter she don't have nothing to worry about um he has never shown anything other than love when it comes to his kids so she good well i don't know what <laughs> switched in his head but um he started getting abusive towards me like i have a dent in my forehead and you can't really tell you i have to touch it but i have a dent in my forehead and that's when i was um thrown across the wall um because i got a b in class and and not the a that i normally get um i don't remember it all i just remember certain things um my attitude definitely changed i was the uh lovey-dovey kid like i want all my my family hugs and kisses i'm going to give you hugs and kisses that's just that's just how i was and i wasn't like that anymore and and i remember him used to tell tell me that if i told my mom anything i don't know why i did that first i need to do my if i told my mom anything um he would beat me so i mom will ask me like how i'm doing and everything and i just would lie um i used to get beat for not sharing with my younger brother 
Um, I, I got beat for like literally any and anything, right? Um, and I just didn't understand why, like, I didn't understand what I did. It just, it just, it, it messed me up. And so when mom came back, um, she noticed a difference in me. She said, I remember her telling me, she was like, when I came back to the house, I reached out to give you a hug and you jumped. And that's an indication that a child has been abused. Cause you, you like, you just... And it wasn't like a big thing, but it's something that a mom, you know what I mean? A parent could could under, could see and could sense. Um, so long story short, that relationship, that relationship ended. Um, so growing up, I feel like I always was attracted to guys that I thought I could fix, right? Not people who have their stuff together, because er people don't have everything together, but majority of it, they have together. And I felt like for me, I just kept attracting dudes that something, something was off. <laughs> Not like saying like something wrong with them, but just like something wasn't off, like they were missing something. Some kind of screws. We're missing in the head, child. Something, girl. And I just felt like, well, they're with me. Um, I don't want to lose them. So let me let me deal, you know? Let me deal with what they have to, they're like quorums. And, and let me see if I could help fix it or... Something, child. I don't know. Um, with that, I have taken a lot of abuse. Um, and it's not just um, physical. Because physical, physical abuse happened, but people only talk about physical as though that's the only thing that, like... And, and it's not, like... Verbal abuse, mental abuse. I mean, mental abuse is when you psyching somebody out to a point where, like, they don't even believe in themselves anymore because they believe more of what you're saying to them. Listen, so I I dealt with a lot, right? And because of that, I felt like because of how it started, so for me, it was almost like, okay, so my father who gave birth to me left. No looking back, right? He then goes and adopts these this lady's kids. And disowns his own flesh and blood. Like I'm my father's only blood child and he um for me it seemed as though like I, I wasn't good enough um nothing that I could say or do would would make him want to choose me and come back to me what was so special about those kids and then i don't know what i did but i think it was facebook i researched what like while i got older and once he had contacted me i researched like what his kids look like and that's when <laughs> it's sad to say but that's when the light skin versus dark skin thing started to hit me because on the islands um I ain't really had to deal with that, to be honest. Uh, but once I came to America, I saw little things here and there, but not anything f t for me to be like, mm, that's trifling. Mm, I don't like that. Nothing like that. But with that being said, 
Um, many of dudes have told me <laughs> that if I was a little lighter, uh, they would have went. They would have went out, went out with me because they like my personality and and all that stuff, child. I used to say a phrase that men ain't shit, but I can't say that no more because uh, my brothers are the shit. My stepdad now, like the the man that my mom is married to now, is the shit. Um, I have some male friends who are the shit. So I can't say men ain't shit no more, but there's a, there's a few of them out there that are doing y'all bad. I'll tell you that much. My next talk, I'll tell y'all what happened the end of last year, um, which was one of, which was the pushing point. I knew I was going to cut my hair, but it was the pushing point for me to, to, yeah. It's time it's it's time to start over. But anyways, um his kids were lighter than me. Um they were of mixed race, which I am as well because my dad um side of the family, which he told me is Trini and Guyanese. And Trini and Guyanese have um Indian and uh Asian influence. Sorry, y'all. I just had a major allergy attack. If y'all have any remedies, natural remedies for allergies, help your sis out, yo, because I'm sick of it. And then I'm trying this lemon under my underarms in the place of deodorant, and it's itching. Lad. All in all, um... Oh, these are flat twists that I did the other day. I'm going to take my, actually, I'm going to take my cover oil. This is a travel size. You guys know the cover oil already. And I'm just going to put that on my scalp. Um, I feel like because my father left, I tend to, um, I felt something about me uh wasn't what he wanted so maybe i felt like maybe if i could give him what he wanted he would have came back so i tend to be like that in um relationships so um i will give like not a hundred percent, but close to in a relationship while the other person is doing like the bare minimum and making it seem like it's a big deal. Because of all those issues that I had, they manifest in my relationships with um and that's like with friends too the people pleasing it manifests in my life so much and it's more than just relation like romantic relationships because i don't want people to leave subconsciously in my head as my my father left and i don't want people to keep it for me is like okay if i don't do or act how people want, they're gonna leave. That's how I used to think. And then when I came to my stepfather, it's almost like the same thing. Like if I wasn't what you wanted me to be, you're gonna turn ugly on me or you're gonna do some things that you shouldn't do and then you're gonna blame me. Right? So, childhood trauma is a serious thing, bro. 
Yo, look at these curls, bro. Look, look, look. Who she is? All right, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope you learned a little bit about me. And I hope you learned a little from me as well. And to research any childhood traumas that you have and see how it like manifests into your life as far as like the people you bring in, who you keep around or how you act um, around certain people. Uh, but don't take childhood trauma lightly and don't uh, make fun of those who are also dealing with it as well. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave in a comment box below any childhood traumas that you have that you've been dealing with. Um, and let's have a conversation. I love you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. See you later, Tiger Lilies. Skittles. Uh, crash course. Let me hide the money in the Dashboard. Max mad, could you lost the brick inside the Porsche? Goofy with the